Oh, the range. What's six times seven, you guys? We're just running off the DC to DC right now. All done. But I'll be like this, 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 this. Good morning, guys. Yeah, I'm just in the middle of a whole stint here where I'm just doing work and stuff. So I haven't been filming a lot, but um, I've been working a lot. So anyway, that's a little gem, I suppose. <laughs> it fits into a video or something. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get back to it. So, uh, it's been weeks and weeks of working on Nick's van. Anyway, uh, his next door neighbor's painting his house today, so we decided to take off and come up here to the range today and uh, just keep the vans out of the driveway and do some shooting. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing today. I probably have one or two more days on his van when we're done. It's been an epic adventure. And I'm way behind everything else that I need to do, so uh, that van has really just changed everything in my schedule. Oh, the range. All right, well, there's a loud one. There we go, turn this guy on. Okay. These earmuffs of mine have batteries in them so that they uh, have noise canceling in them. They're for this kind of thing. So what are you up to here? Uh, I'm just going to uh, sight in this rifle. Check this factory ammunition. Oh yeah. And uh, you can set that this up. This is uh, eight by sixty-eight. My rifle's eight by sixty-eight improved, yeah. so I'll blow out the shoulder on this as well and uh, get it fire formed for when I reload it. Hmm. Okay, we're going to have a ceasefire and a ceasefire, and uh, put your bench light number on if you're going to hang up targets. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm just going out to put out my targets. I just used a piece of paper with a orange dot on it. You could get real technical with it. There's a grid pattern on it, but I just use that for measuring my MOA or mill or whatever, whatever you want to, whatever school of thought you're into for that. It's basically metric or imperial. Um, but in today's case, I'm not really shooting to for accuracy. I'm shooting for velocity. Um, so I'm going to be setting up my chronograph, or I guess it's a magneto speed, and then, uh, yeah. I should have filmed that, I got distracted. Nick was asking me some questions. Um, but yeah, I just set these up at 100, um, and that's fine. He's back up there at 2, and I think the range here goes up to 250, or... I don't know. Anyway, I'll check it out. <laughs> Chicory. This stuff here. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to freak you out. This stuff has uh, really, got a really good tasty root in it. Um, they roast that often and use it as a coffee substitute out of that plant. There's a bunch of it. There's another one right down there. Anyway, there's my target. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go get situated at my bench.
So this is kind of like my range kit here. And uh, essentially I'm gonna need a couple things out of here. And uh, I'll set it up on that bench. It's my chronograph deal. Let's get that ready. use this actually yeah I'm already hit my switch the range is hot we never hear ear protection and eye protection thank you I need to be right back so what I'm doing here is a ladder test and I'm looking for a speed note essentially I've loaded up 20 rounds of ammunition with this new fully monolithic copper bullet which is there's no lead in it so I've gone to that for this year's hunting season and I'm trying to find an optimal charge weight in that particular ammo. I do make my own ammunition so um, essentially I'm trying to find what that is in this particular case. So what I'll do is I'll shoot these 20 rounds over my chronograph and measure the speed or the velocity of each one of those rounds as it goes through. I'll graph it out and I'll look for a flat spot on the graph where I've got about five or six rounds that are pretty close to one another in terms of velocity. And then I'll choose the one right in the middle of that and call that my optimal charge weight. So during a ladder test, the next step here is I'm going to mark down the velocity that was captured during that shot. And I'll also inspect the spent cartridge and just see if the brass or the primer has any signs of high pressure. The other thing that I do, uh, I'm not really showing it here, is that I take about a two minute break between each shot just so that the barrel can cool down. Okay, so that morning shooting at the range was really fun. Um, it was pretty short little visit there so we had to get back here nick had to get back to some work and stuff so um what i'll have to do is i still have work to do at the range anyway um i'll have some more work to do in that case later on i'll probably do that on my own later but we're back here and i'm going to plug in his system today Woo! nick are you excited to plug in the system today oh my god so fucking oh so freaking excited <laughs> You just also, fuck. I'm lowering the fuel tank today, which I'm a little scared about, but also excited about. Yep. Yeah. Six times seven. Uh, what? <laughs> What's six times seven, you guys? Yeah, six times seven is 42, right? 42? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I forget my times tables, but yeah. I also forget my times tables. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's 42 pounds of fuel in there. Oh, yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can manage that. I mean, it's, it's a little bit, but the tank is. So we'll say six. Really, we just have to like hold one side, unbolt the other side, and then lower it down to the boards and then slide it out. It'll be easy. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. There we go. Sometimes it sparks when you do that, so I'm just going to do this. Oh, we are good. Hmm. It's not keto, but... Do you want to try and support the tank as I pull it out on that side? Yeah, you got that? Okay. 
control of the dot. Cool. Uh, something got disconnected back there. I see that, yeah. Mm hmm There it is. Uh, looks pretty slick. Will everything still work? <laughs> Anyway, I've got the van running. It's charging right now. It's sending 118 watts back to the back, which is uh, 8.05 amps. And uh, everything's looking good. So there's the charging system right there. And uh, yeah, it's currently getting a charge right now from the alternator. It started off at about 40 amps. So it's it's kind of since go down on them, but that's just because these batteries are just about full. Um, but everything is looking pretty good. So anyway, he's got a 2000 watt inverter. He's got the Renogy MPPT and DC to DC charger. Right now we're just running off the DC to DC right now. Um, he doesn't have solar yet on the roof, but when he does, he's gonna bring those wires down in here. And we don't have the breaker in it yet, but there's gonna be a little breaker here for the solar power coming in. Um, the main battery switch, I set it up with a terminal fuse on this side plus the main battery wire going in and a terminal fuse on this side and a battery wire coming out of that. So when you turn this switch off, it's turning off power to the inverter. The inverter no longer is getting any sort of feed and also the DC distribution hub is no longer getting any feed. So that's where these two are going. That one's going to the inverter and the other one's going right here to this thing. So turn that back on. Um, this is a cool little housing because it distributes the DC loads out. I really like this one in particular because it's got a waterproof seal on the front, um, but it's got four spots for high amperage loads up to 200 amps, or I think it's 250 amps, which is really great. So you could, you know, if you're running a smaller inverter, you wouldn't even need this terminal fuse. Everything could be run out of this thing. Um, so these we've got, um, this load is going to the front control box. This one's going to the passenger control box. This one's going to the aft control box. He's got controls and little switches with fuses on them at each one of those locations. So we're just fusing the main big wires going out to them. Um, and uh, there's a, a bunch of spares up here for running smaller loads like um, with your spade connectors, spade fuses and stuff like that. But we don't have anything running on that in his system. So he's just using it for the bottom half for now. But he's got room to grow into with it. Um, and then the negative's coming off of here. And I've used this whole negative as a bus bar as well to distribute out to the other, the other points of interest. And then of course his Victron battery shunt, the main negative coming into it and then the, all the other negatives are coming out. So I got one going to the inverter, the other one's going down to a ground point, which is another two watt wire that's going to here. Um, and just so that everything can run through that, but it's a pretty clean setup. And then the comms wire coming off of that, these are the two battery voltage monitors. So one's for the these batteries right here, and the other one is for the starter battery, which actually goes right here on the charger because this wire is coming from the starter battery right there. Um, pretty cool. Anyway, that's a tidy little setup. His, um, there's a, these are all the wires here bundled for, uh, he's going to have a control center down in here and there's one back here as well. Um, this one will be a little bit simpler, but there'll be a little one down in this cabinet once he builds all that. Uh, these are just Mercedes wires, but I don't know what those are. Um, he does. This is for his ceiling fan. He's got a little Scirocco fan that he's going to put up here. Um, and then his lighting, lighting wires are already hooked up. So he's going to have three, he's going to have two lights back here, two lights right over here, and then the two lights up in the front. Yeah, of course his shower. He's got wire chase running through there. Probably tidy that up. In the front, he's got um, this wire here is going down to the heater and there's another one there for the toilet fan vent. And then here's the control center. So I've got the po main positives coming in there to a power post and it's getting distributed off to his main switch panel. 
and um, there's a couple other wires that are going down here to what's going to have like just 12 volt plug-ins this is one of the AC wires coming off of the inverter so that's going to give them an AC plug right there all these other ones have been connected so um, one of these is going to be for his fridge one for his water pump the other one for that Sirocco fan in the back um, he's got his heater controller here and this one is uh, is a brown this is the heater itself and then uh, that's it then he's got his Wii boost up here too for his cell phone booster and all the uh, the main negatives coming in here to this bus bar so all the negatives are going on to this thing here which is nice and respectively all the other positives go into this switch panel and this is all um, if you pull this rubber gasket off on the front it's hard to do it with one hand but behind there there's a bunch of fuses in there so that's where he's fusing to his lights his max air fan so oh, i gotta turn it on here this is how he wanted to set it up so we'll turn it on and then we'll turn it on there we go presto Hey. Got some videos done. Hey, man. Nice. Breakfast is ready. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. All done. All right. So I'm uh, <laughs> heading back to the mainland. I got to go deal with some personal stuff and I need some more time at the range to uh, work on this load that I'm working on. I know some of you guys don't care about that kind of thing because some of you guys are vegan and maybe don't understand why I go hunting and stuff. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that because I'm sensitive to, um, you know, the opinions of vegetarians and vegans and all that sort of thing. I've got a lot of vegetarian and vegan friends. And um, then I know a lot of people that eat meat as well. But uh, anyway, I've, I've got a choice and a, a whole philosophy behind all of that that I'll share with you. In the meantime, I'm going to head back to Squamish and uh, sort through some of my stuff. And then... Uh, do that rest of that load development that I'm working on and uh, yeah I'm just looking for a more um, ethical way to uh, you know to dispatch an animal and uh, and harvest it in the wild while being uh, sensitive to the environment and all that sort of thing at the same time so I've been sitting here for for a while this guy's just like start your engines and I'm like all right <laughs> uh, Feels good. Feels really good to be back in Squamish. I um, I went out to dinner tonight. I had some uh, wings, and I splurged, and I had a beer, and I had some yam fries, which is not keto at all. But uh, I figured once in a while for something like that, it's probably okay. But um, man, the air temperature is really great. It's dry. It's, uh, it's nice. And there's like all these rigs all back here. Every one of these vans here, you guys, these are people that are living in their vans or just summer, summertime traveling in their vans. Like there's, right? All of those, there's quite a bit. So, You know, people definitely do 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 do
do this lifestyle. You know what's funny is since I started making these videos and recording myself, I'll go through the footage and I catch myself stuttering. And, uh, and, and, and I was just like, wow, I didn't realize I actually stuttered. It's not all the time, it's pretty occasional. But I'll be like this, 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 this. And I was like, wow, I do it sometimes. Um, it's pretty neat when you record yourself what you pick up on and what you see. Anyway, um, I am going to curl up in my van and uh, go to bed. And uh, I tomorrow I'm going to have to wake up and probably head straight to my storage locker and work through some stuff. And uh, eventually I'm going to go to the range and work on that load development that I'm doing. Um, I've got one more ladder test to do of a different projectile type that I'm after. And then I'm going to kind of look at the data and figure out what direction I want to go in. And then I'll probably load up some more, go test those out, and uh, just to verify everything. And if that's all good, then I'm going to load up a bunch of ammo. And then that'll be my new load, and I will, uh, I'll just sight it in for that. And uh, I'll have to get all the, the ballistics profile and the, the BCs and all that sort of stuff so that I can work it into my, uh, my ballistics calculator. I have done some of the calculations longhand for shooting solutions, but there's a lot of information to crank through and figure out. And it's nice when you can just have a ballistics calculator to help you out when you're, when you're, you know, in a situation where you got to shoot. Um, and there's a couple different ones that I use. So, uh, anyway, won't get into that right now, but, uh, I'm gonna go to bed, you guys. I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna curl up in my van and go to bed. So we will see you soon. Um, and um, yeah, it's a good adventure. We'll see you soon, you guys. Take it easy, take care of yourselves and much love to all of you. Bye-bye.